dog man come on. what's up y'all I'm Belil Black and welcome back to the dog man cometh sorry for my voice I've been a little sick this past week um, I figured we'd get right back into it this is part two for the for the beast of LBL and um, the you know it's been difficult to find you know information that is well, not copywritten to somebody's fucking blog or some shit, and um, it's kind of it's been very aggravating. Personally, I don't believe. And look, unless it's personal information, I don't think that that you should be able to copyright shit like this because everybody should know all this information, man. They should all have, you know, some way to get this information and to spread it around it shouldn't be you know held by just a select few people and I mean that's that's just my opinion I wish that all information that's not someone's personal shit should be put out there you know but uh, that's just me I guess anyway let's get into it this is Part 2 for the Beast of the Land Between the Lakes. And I hope y'all enjoy what I could find. Alrighty. Let's see here. According to the Bible, in the city of Canaan, which in ancient Hebrew means canine, was home to many, quote, dog heads who roamed the city eating human flesh. Now this is out of uh, Marco Polo's Travels. St. Christopher has been rumored to have been a doghead whose real name was Reprobus or Reprobate or quote scoundrel. Now these are not my words, alright? This is just information that I've gathered, so don't get all butt hurt on me, okay? According to this legend, once he accepted the Christian faith, he changed his ways. He also, or he was also a Canaanite who was martyred in 251 in Asia Minor. Marco Polo wrote of Sinocephaly, or the dog-headed men, who grew spices on, uh, you know, on the island of, uh, oh shit, there's one of them words again, Angamanane, I guess is how you say it. Uh, look, down here in Arkansas, man, we can't, most of us are not well, we're not stupid by no means, man, but, you know, these huge fucking out there words are just not our cup of tea. We like to, you know, simplify shit, make it easier to understand. Most people who have seen these creatures have described a feeling that ranges from one of unease and fear to the feeling that the creatures are outright maliciously evil. They have stated that they felt in fear for their lives, or they felt like prey. Now, hunters who have done so all their lives have actually given it up and no longer even go into the forest to hunt because of you know, the sightings or encounters they've had with said creatures and entities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like I said, man, my throat uh, fucked up for the last week or so. Now, dog men... They apparently have a fondness for dogs and will kill them. The biggest and most vicious guard dog is reduced to a whimpering, cowering mess when these things are around. They've been observed as eat of eating dogs in the middle of a country road. Cats also seem to be victims of their disturbing appetites, but they've never attacked a human. Have they? Perhaps they have. Quite possibly, anyway. In the summer of uh, 1980, according to a late convenience store clerk, two officers, two police officers, whom she knew on a first name basis, told her a tale about an entire family that had been slaughtered by something at a campground inside their RV. This incident 
as well as the mutilated body of a bow hunter took place in, you guessed it, the land between the lakes. Now, and this place is on the Tennessee and Kentucky border for people who don't know. There were, according to several anonymous police officers who were called to the scene, dozens of CIA, FBI, and every other alphabet group operating under the federal government. Now, it sounds to me a little like it's a little suspicious, man. I mean, they're obviously covering this shit up, and regardless of what your thoughts on what these creatures could be or are, thing is, more likely than not, you know, the government has something to do with it. They know something about it, and they're covering it up. They're hiding it from us for some reason. But we're going to get into that on a later episode. Now, uh, I do have one story for this episode, and um, or for this episode, part two. But, I, to be honest, I'm not exactly, I can't exactly remember where I got it from, because like I said, I've spent so much time looking over every, you know, looking through everything I could find on, on the web, and... Um, <clears throat> the thing is, man, is I spent so much time looking that half the time I can't even remember what websites I was on. You know, um, and every other website was, yo, know, this, yo, know, copyright this, copyright that, and I find it ridiculous. But I did find this one, this one uh, singular story, and hopefully. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. <coughs> oh shit! Like I said, sorry about that, man. Like uh, I've already told y'all that I've been out sick for about the last week. Anyway, here goes. I believed werewolves were fake until I saw one this summer. It was around dusk, and I had settled in, but it was still light enough to see. All of a sudden, my friend busts in the front door, yelling about something in a neighboring field. I decided to entertain him, and I followed him out to the field. We walked about a half mile, and I still didn't see anything. And I wanted, I wanted to go back, but he insisted. So I reluctantly followed, and just before we reached an old slaughtering house, I saw a rather large canine about 70 feet away. It was sitting on its haunches, and I thought it was, you know, just a big dog, until it stood up on both legs and ran into the old slaughtering house. Both of us thought it was a good idea to head for the hills, so we ran back to my house, and it followed us. By then it was dark, so we were about to retreat to my house and lock up. Then came a smell so foul and terrible that I still remember it that terrible smell is only comparable to rotting human flesh just then it ran in front of us about 30 feet away I estimated its height at between six and a half to seven and a half feet tall we bolted in and stayed there and for the rest of the night we cowered but the dogs in the neighborhood would not stop barking we went outside in the morning, and the smell still lingered. The smell stayed for days, and on the third night, around midnight, the sound of a window being forced out woke me, and I took a knife and explored and found that a window pane had been completely forced. Without breaking the glass, it had been forced out. After that, the smell disappeared, and I haven't seen one since. I haven't smelled the smell since. Now, there's no explanation for the animal, and there was no evidence, so I didn't post till now. I decided to post because someone started a wear thread, and I wanted to contribute, but I looked at the size of the story and decided to post it. I live near LBL. And people tell stories of a beast like the one I described. 
But those are just stories, right? You know what? Perhaps they're not just stories. We have to think about this. Alright? Everything from, you know, the Skinwalker, to the Mendoza, to the Rougarou, to the Beast of Bray Road, the Beast of the Land Between the Lakes, the Michigan Dog Man. It, it all just seems too similar. And these stories were, you know, many of these stories were floating around or being told orally, like at campfires or, you know, from grandparents to their grandchildren and so on and so forth. Long before the internet ever existed, long before, long before TV was even a thought, what does it make you think? I mean, and the difference in the, you know, in the distance between these places, and it's not just in America either, people. They're seeing things like this all over the world. They're seeing them over in Europe. They're seeing them in South America and Central America, all over North America. And, you know, it's just time after time with little differences just small differences but the majority of the time the descriptions of these creatures are so similar that it's spooky it really is it's, it's shocking to say the least and it's the, it's the like with Sasquatch people refuse to believe unless they see it and the reason they refuse to believe unless they see it is understandable I mean you're constantly being told these things don't exist you know and uh, when it comes to the scientific world you know seeing is believing and if you don't see something then it's understandable you're not gonna believe in it but what about the people who experience these things man and th this is coming th this is personal to me this is coming from somebody who knows all right what happens when you see one of these things and it turns your whole world upside down because you've spent your entire life being told monsters don't exist they're not real and then you see one you know and you have this encounter that can't be explained and you can't tell anybody for the simple fucking fact that they're gonna call you a liar or tell you you're crazy or you're imagining things that you didn't see what you seen or you were on something and then as as you go on from there you you don't want to tell anybody else you know you don't want to you don't want to have to you know go through that ridicule you don't want to have to experience all that again and not only that you start to you start to resent those around you because you know all your life you were told they don't exist and then you have this experience that literally shocks you from the ground up everything crumbles around you and you still you can't tell anybody and you like I said you start to resent people and you start to feel this tug of hatred because you know what you've seen and yet the people around you are too either ignorant or just completely stupid and refuse to acknowledge what they can't see but at the same time inside you've got to understand that you know, they didn't see it why would they believe it and they've been being told the same shit since they were little you know they were told the same things you know, the majority of them anyway that's why it's always refreshing to hear you know somebody say you know I've never seen something like that but I, I do not and I cannot or will not doubt the fact that they could exist. Too many people have seen them. That's the kind of shit I like to hear. You know, I get so tired of fucking trolls. You know, and trolls and just these assholes in the comments of not just not just my videos, but all you know, all the videos of every other, you know, dog man and Sasquatch, you know, channel. 
where all they want to do is they want to get the word out there, and then you've got these fucking pricks in the comments, you know, little nerdy ass bastards sitting behind their keyboards where it's safe or so they think, you know, because they're they're not they're not man enough or woman enough. To say something to someone's face. Yeah, you go out there and you see what's out there, man. You go out there and try to have an encounter with one of these things and see how you feel afterwards. See what your thoughts are on the matter then. That kind of shit just infuriates me. Now, I'm not saying you should go out there looking for these things. Not literally, anyway, because that would not be smart. I mean, it would not be an intelligent thing to do. These things could rip a grown man apart with no problem whatsoever. They wouldn't even have to expel much energy to do so. Take my word on that. At some point, we've got to stop with all this, with all this. Oh, that's my information bullshit or that, you know, you didn't see what you think you did type of thing that people like to throw out there. Oh, you didn't see that. There's no way you could have seen that. They don't exist. Really? Were you there? You know, did you see what I seen? Did you see the drool dripping off the side of its mouth? Did you see the light shining in its eyes? What about the tufts of hair coming off the top of its ears? What about the long ass fucking canines hanging out the side of its mouth? What about the hands, huh? Did you see all that? No. Then shut the hell up. You know, if, if you don't like or don't agree with or don't believe in the topics that, you know, channels like mine or or Vicks or Dark Waters, if you don't like that type of shit, then don't watch the fucking videos, people. But to everybody who does and everybody who wants to hear the stories, thank you. Because that's the kind of support that people need. Whether, whether you've actually seen one or not, people need that kind of support. They need people who are willing to sit there and listen just so they can get these stories off their chest. You know, there are people out there who would love to hear your stories, like like Vic Cundiff, Danielle Stedman. I respect both of them greatly. And, and they're just two of just two people out of a plethora of different channels out there who are willing to, to tell your story to get it out there for you. Me, perhaps perhaps sometime in the future. You know, perhaps I'll do, I, you know, I would do something like that in the future, but for the time being, all I'm worried about is letting people know what's out there. Letting people know that there is, there, there is no, there could be something out there. No, there is something out there, and people need to be aware of it. And for everybody... All my subscribers, everybody watching this video, I want to thank you because, you know, I'm not an easy person to listen to by any means. Sometimes I get irate and angry about shit, but that's, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you take the time out of your busy days to watch my videos and I appreciate it I fucking appreciate it and I, and I know people don't like the fact that I uh, that I use a lot of curse words you know quote unquote curse words that's just the way I am man I don't think about you know a lot of the things that I say from time to time I don't really think about it before it comes out of my mouth and um it, you know, those who those people who know someone who is affected with schizophrenia or something like that, y'all y'all will understand. Or those of you who who have it, y'all know how it is. Sometimes your your mind just pulls you in 
a dozen or more different directions at once and you don't really take the time to think about the words you're using but that's enough about that I'm Belil Black thank you for joining me on the dog man cometh take it easy my friends <laughs>